So let's get right into On a Wing and a Prayer. This is a really interesting film. It's based on a true story. What was it that attracted you to the role? Um, well, it's always cool to be part of a true story. Um, sometimes life is stranger than fiction. Uh, and in this case, uh, these harrowing events that these people lived through and uh, uh, the character that I play in the movie, Carrie Sorensen, sort of heroically helping to uh, – uh, guide this plane to safety and and allow Doug White, you know, with minimal flight experience to save himself and his family uh, is a pretty remarkable story. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And well, it's uh, terrifying, by the way. I mean, like, I can't think of a more terrifying thing, right? Like, I mean, I, I don't even. Yeah, it's a nightmare really come to life. Essentially. It really is. It really yeah. is. Um, and I, you know, just incredibly proud of the uh, director and the producers on this project because, you know, when I finally got to see the finished product, uh, I was very happy. I think it's a really watchable, compelling uh, film. So, but originally I was, I was attracted to the character because of what Carrie had gone through uh, in his life, losing both of his fathers, his biological father and his stepfather to plane crashes. And the way the character was executed in the script, you know, he had a, a lot of unresolved trauma and it was coming out uh, in his personal relationship. So I felt like, you know, helping save Doug White and his family was a cathartic experience for him. So it made for a very uh, strong emotional arc. And I, as actors, that's what, that's what we look for. You know, we look for something we can sink our teeth into emotionally. Yeah. What are the, what are the challenges? I mean, you've done so much in Hollywood, right? When you're just doing something that's conjured up, made up, it's a story that didn't happen versus something that really happened with real people who you're now representing. Like what, what comes along with that? Well, there's a lot more res responsibility, you know, when you're telling, um, true life events where people were profoundly impacted, you know, I mean, you see that with, uh, you know, uh, a lot of stories nowadays, um, like uh, the, the the new Netflix series about Jeffrey Dahmer, for instance, you know, very tragic events. And a lot of the relatives of the victims of those events were upset, you know, yeah. I very upset that story yeah. was told. So there is there is huge responsibility. Now, obviously, we took incredible artistic license, you know, straight from the jump because I look nothing like Carrie Sorensen. <laughs> <laughs> but hopefully I was able to do him justice, you know, um, and extrapolate some essence of his, you know, personality from the interviews he did and, you know, uh, the, the speech that he made prior to these events. Um, and I, and I, and ultimately seeing my performance, I think I was, you know, I mean, we made a very uplifting, inspiring movie. So I can't, I, I can't imagine we get too many, too much criticism over it. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's a great story. It looks like it was super well done and yeah, you know, like anything else, it's going to entertain people, but beyond the entertainment, what do you think the audience takes away from this film? Well, I, I mean, it, it's, you know, in my character's case, it's a story about redemption. Um, but it's also, uh, you know, about having faith, uh, having faith in yourself, you know, that extraordinary people can do extraordinary, that ordinary people can do extraordinary things, you know, when, you know, life is on the line. Um, and also, also about, you know, leaning on the people closest to you you know, leaning on your family when you're going through hard times, you know, and uh, yeah, and having faith in them. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, you, you've had really a great career, an interesting career, it continues to be fascinating. You've done lots of different things. What is unique about sort of that faith and family friendly space, you know, that, that you have found interesting to work in? Well, I love that the family friendly faith genre is thriving right now because I think we need that more than ever. But what I love about this movie is that I wouldn't call it a faith-based movie. 
I mean, I, I think it really bridges the gap between the faith-based content out there and, and mainstream content. You know, I mean, yes, there's a message in this movie, but it certainly doesn't hit you over the head with anything. And I mean, nobody likes to be hit over the head with any message, you know, be it be it a faith based message or not, you know, I mean, generally, we find that a little annoying. Um, and this movie is far from that. Yeah, I think people just want to be able to sit down and watch things with their family too, right? There's a place yeah. for faith heavy, there's a place for not. But but at the end of the day, it feels like I think a lot of people are like, hey, I just want to watch a movie and be able to do it in a way that I can feel like I didn't you know, put something in front of my kids or whatever, or even in front of myself that I didn't want to watch, right? Like just something good and positive and uplifting. And maybe it's a tough story, but it takes you through, you know, learning something through that in an incredible way, right? I couldn't agree more. Now, your own journey is, you know, fascinating. You know, how has for you, you know, just sort of looking at, you know, faith in your life in general, I know you've gone through things, I know it's sustained you, you know, what has been that role of faith for you just in, in getting over some of the big things in your own life? I have a, a much stronger connection to my faith as I've gotten older. I don't know if it's because over time, life just humbles us all. <laughs> and we need to look to something bigger than, you know, our problems on this earth. Um, but I believe having a spiritual connection to a higher power is what is missing from most people's lives, you know, and it, but, it, I, you know, I've only realized that in my 40s. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know you've gone through, I mean, you've gone through, you know, achieving sobriety, you've gone through things and you've openly talked about them, which is also great because not everybody does that. You know, some people, they go through things and they don't ever want to talk about it and that's their right. But you've talked about that stuff and you've been open about it and the spiritual journey sort of come out in, in some of that. Is it hard to be open when you're a public figure like that about those personal things? Yeah, it was hard, um, back then. Yeah. But it's not hard now. You get used to it and you, and you move through it. I, I think it's just life is so much easier when you are authentically yourself and when you're honest. Um, we overcomplicate things, you know, as human yeah. beings, because at the end of the day, we're all flawed, you know, and anyone who, um, you know, judges someone, you know, uh, for their, for their missteps or their mistakes in life. It's just, you know, they haven't achieved the wisdom yet to know that we'll all be there at one point or another. You know, it's about, it's about compassion. Um, it's about empathy, you know, it's, and, and I think people need to see people that they look up to or people that they believe are in, you know, powerful positions be honest about about the challenges that they that they're going through in life. You know, I think that empowers others. Yeah, well, other people are going through those challenges, right? So when you see like a lot of people suffer silently, they don't want to admit they've gone through something or they're going through. But when you see somebody who you look up to who's being willing on a on a national, international stage to say, look, I went through this, this happened to me, that actually helps people a great deal, I think, more than maybe even some celebrities realize, honestly. I, I agree with you completely. All right, so final question for you. We're obviously talking about On a Wing and a Prayer, uh, really incredible film. But this is a question I've been asking people a lot lately, and it might catch you off guard, but I'm, I'm just going to ask it because I'm always intrigued by the response. At the end of the day, when all is said and done, at the end of your career, when people look back and they look at legacy, what do you want your legacy to be? That I, that I was a good actor. That's Pretty a simple good. one. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Oh, I remember him. He was a good actor. <laughs> I love it. That's, that's all, that's all I need. I mean, I honestly, I hope the last, I hope, I hope I'm financially secure enough and feel satiated by my career enough and my achievements that it, in the final chapter of my life, I would just like to dedicate myself and my time, uh, to philanthropy you know, and maybe try to retire at the top. You know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't need to act, you know, until I'm in the grave, you know, I, 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 there's, I feel like there's probably something 
else that I'm meant to do. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Well, listen, I appreciate your time and appreciate you speaking with us today. Looking forward to having you back again sometime soon. Thanks so much, man. Appreciate the support.